Hi. So you want to make video games? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You want to design amazing worlds? Yeah, that'd be awesome. You want to get rich? Yeah, that'd be pretty nice. Then learn game development. No, why not? It's hard. Why? You have to learn programming, art and design, but you can start small. But sadly, I don't know where to begin. Well, what is game development? Making games? Yes, but it's more than that. It's about creating fun experiences, solving problems and telling stories. Do I need to code? I've heard that before. Yes, but it's not just about code. What? It's all about problem solving and creative thinking. You have to understand concepts and how to apply them. Okay, what about game engines? They're just tools. Are they important? Kind of, but a lot of people focus too much on the engine itself and less on making the game fun. Is that bad? Yes. Why? Because you'll end up stuck in tutorials. Is that bad? Yes, yes. Why? Because you'll never learn how to make your own games. Oh, how do you study game development then? Don't try to memorize everything about the engine. Instead, learn patterns, problem-solving approaches, and how different pieces fit together. So how do you get better at making games? You make games. What? You do it. Make games. Really? Yes, that's it. Yes, really. Game development is a skill. Okay, but can we make this easier? I'm lazy. I don't like hard work. Me too. I don't like to study for 8 hours a day. So let me show you how I like to learn. I like to use simple offline tools that exist in front of my eyes on the desk itself. Like what? Notebooks, sticky notes. Anything that helps me jot down ideas quickly. Don't other apps exist? Yes. Then why simple tools? Because I want to focus on learning, not on making my notes look good. It's easy to use and most importantly, it keeps things simple. Oh, that's pretty cool. You might notice my notes aren't exactly winning any beauty contests. Yeah, they're pretty simple. Here's the thing, I actually want to learn stuff not make my notes look good. A lot of people like fancy apps and that's cool, but it doesn't really help with game development unless it makes you think. Also, simple offline tools are easily accessible. Whenever I study, I want to maximize my time. Ideally, I want to learn as much in two hours as someone else does in eight hours. If you're really into game development, you should already know where I'm going with this. I want to optimize my time. Let me introduce you to the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle? Yes, also called the 80-20 rule. What's that? It's the idea that approximately 80% of results come from about 20% of your efforts. What? A small portion of your work leads to most of your results. So 20% of work equals 80% of results. Oh cool, it sounds crazy, right? Yeah. So how do we apply this to studying game development? We have to concentrate on areas where we get big wins with little effort. Let me show you how we do that. Whenever I study, I like to focus on core concepts. This is important. Instead of memorizing every game engine feature, I focus on understanding the fundamental principles. Why? Because of the 80-20 rule. These fundamentals will get you 80% of the results. When I'm learning new game development concepts, I have specific questions that help me maximize my learning efficiency and understand core ideas. I call these my big questions. What is this? Why is this important? Why should I learn this? When will I need this? How does it work? Now, if you don't like these questions, you can create your own. It's simple. All you need is a what, a why, a when, and a how. Why do I use these questions? They're not just random. They help me connect what I'm learning to other areas. It helps me understand where the subject fits into the bigger picture, and it also lets me organize the topics. So let's say I'm learning something about game design. The big questions would be, what is game design? Why is game design important? Why should I learn game design? When will I need it? How does it work? I'm not just copying definitions. I'm trying to understand why this concept exists, but I don't stop there. If I'm given information about the topic, I take it a step farther by turning the information into questions. This this method allows my brain to actively engage with the material, which is way more effective than passive reading. Let's keep going with the game design example. Let's say I learn about level design game mechanics and player experience. I'd rephrase the information which would give me, what is level design? What are game mechanics? How do you create a good player experience? Then I'd also ask my own questions, like what's the difference between level design and game mechanics?